நண்பர்களுக்கு வணக்கம் எல்லோரும் நன்றாக இருப்பீர்கள் This program is brought to you by Guruji TV. This YouTube video is a translation of the Tamil video of a renowned astrologer, Jyotish Mahaguru Aditya Guruji. The link of the original version that is the Tamil video is given in the description box of this video. In my last video, I explained about the favorable Dasha, that is favorable major planetary period, for the native of Capricorn Ascendant and unfavorable Dasha, favorable professions, etc. In this video, I am going to explain about the effects of the planets in the house of Aquarius. I started explaining the effects of the planets right from Aries house and I have reached the house of Aquarius which is the 11th house of the Kala Purusha. This is the preceding house of the Pisces. Well, this is the 11th house of the Kala Purusha. Before explaining how a planet will deliver its effects when it resides in the house of Aquarius, it is necessary to understand the house of Aquarius, which is the basic plot for all the planets that resides. Therefore, now let us see what are the basic characteristics of the house of Aquarius? I have written about this in one of my books. I am not sure whether it is a Jodidam Enum Deva Ragasiyam or another book. The very last house of the Kala Purusha is Pisces. However, based on the concept of light energy, I will say that Aquarius is the very last house of the natural zodiac, though indeed Pisces is the last house of the Kala Purusha. There are some unique significance about the house of Aquarius. The uniqueness about the Aquarius is for the native of Aquarius ascendant, there is no functional benefit, which is indeed an unfavorable feature for the native of Aquarius ascendant. Aquarius is the house which is very far away from the sun, which does not receive light from the sun, the planet which actually operates us and is the hero of the solar universe. The natural zodiac is indeed a space of 360 degrees, which is like a circle. For our convenience, we have transformed this circle into a square. Therefore, in the natural zodiac, the Pisces is the 12th house. However, the very last house of the Kala Purusha is indeed the house of Aquarius and not Pisces. The reason or the intricacy behind this concept is the house of Aquarius is the house which does not receive the sunlight at all, which is very far from the sun. Therefore, it is filled with lot of darkness. This is why the Aquarius house is said to be very Pabatwa. Among the categories of the Chara, Sthira and Upaya Rashis, that is, mobile, fixed and dual Rashis, the most important one among the three categories of the Rashis is of course the Chara Rashi, that is the mobile sign. For the native of Aquarius Ascendant, the Ascendant Lord itself becomes the Lord of the 12th house as well. Saturn becomes the Lord of the 12th house. The Lord of the 5th house, which is Mercury, becomes the Lord of the 8th house as well, which is the house of Virgo. In addition to this, the Mercury will get Multricon status, in the 8th house for the native of Aquarius Ascendant. Therefore, the planet Mercury gives a blend of both good and bad effects, that it will give the effects of the 5th house benefits and the worse effects of the 8th house as well. Having said all these, 
only for the native of Aquarius ascendant, nobody is 100% functional benefic, including the ascendant Lord Saturn as well. The native of Aquarius ascendant might ask, are we sinners because no planet is a complete functional benefic for us? In some situations, of course we have to accept the truth that nobody should be born as native of Aquarius Ascendant or Rashi. Whatever the characteristics I explain, it greatly or immensely applies to the native of Aquarius Ascendant than Rashi. The native of Aquarius Ascendant might ask, should we not be born as native of Aquarius Ascendant at all? The following is my response. Please try to understand something. Nobody in this world has a choice to choose which ascendant they should be born as. It is not in your hands at all. It is by the grace of Almighty each person is born as native of a particular ascendant. Does it mean that the native of Aquarius ascendant or Aquarius Rashi never reaches higher goals in their life? It's not true. Of course, such winners also exist. Based on the Subhatva, they live a greater or a better life. Therefore, only for the native of Aquarius Ascendant, the Ascendant Lord itself becomes the Lord of the 12th house and the Lord of the 5th house, which is Mercury, becomes the Lord of the 8th house, that too it attains Moltricon status. Consequently, what would happen? The Mercury, rather doing the 5th house effects, will do more of the 8th house effects. The Lord of the 9th house Venus becomes Padagadibadi for the native of Aquarius Ascendant. This is the reason that nobody becomes 100% complete functional benefic for the native of Aquarius Ascendant. Even the Ascendant Lord becomes the House Lord of the Inauspicious House, 12th House. Therefore, the native of Aquarius Ascendant will spoil themselves. These are the people who easily miss their opportunities in their life and they are highly skeptical people. These people have a lot of inferiority complex. All these will happen when Saturn is Pabatwa, that is, when Saturn is in its very own natural state. The Ascendant Lord itself is malefic. Many people would start to complain that I am not the person the way you describe. You will start to explain in your own ways that Saturn did a lot of benefits to you in life. Please try to understand that the Almighty has blessed to understand the concepts of Subhatva and Pabhatva that you might have not discovered it. As a general opinion, many of my subscribers disagree a point that I explained in my videos. But when they take a personal appointment and when I explain their birth chart with all my concepts, the life events, then they definitely agree to my points. This happens during the personal interviews or appointments. Some people will say gracefully that Saturn is a planet that delivers all the benefits to them. Many people say that they were doing well during the major planetary period of Saturn and some even added that they were doing well during the major planetary period of even the Pabatwa Saturn. I would definitely say that you still cannot identify the difference between the Pabatwa and Subhatwa of the Saturn. My words will never go in vain or go false regarding the characteristics of Saturn. Whatever behavior I explained about the native of Aquarius Ascendant or Aquarius Rashi will never go false. It will never change. I will say that my concepts are 100% accurate. This is purely by the grace of Almighty and the outcome of my experience and research of many years in astrology. 
Therefore, whatever I say becomes 100% true. I need to explain a lot about the Aquarius house. Though Aquarius is the 11th house of the Kala Purusha, it is the last house of the natural zodiac based on the light energy and whose house does not receive light at all. The unique feature about this house is that for the native of Aquarius Ascendant or Rashi, no planet could be of complete functional benefit because the Ascendant Lord itself becomes the Lord of the 12th house and the Lord of the 5th house, Mercury, becomes the Lord of the 8th house as well and the 8th house is the Mool Tricon house and the Exaltation house for the Mercury. The Lord of the ninth house which is Venus becomes the complete Padagadibadi for the native of Aquarius Ascendant. Therefore, the native of Aquarius Ascendant has to face all these hurdles in their life. Imagine a situation where a sprinter has to run on the track with a lot of hurdles on the track. This is the way the life of the native of Aquarius Ascendant or Rashi will be. This is how life would be for the native of Aquarius Ascendant in whose natal chart there are more planets in the house of Aquarius. Now let me explain about the characteristics of the Aquarius house. The Aquarius house covers a space of 30 degrees right from 300 degrees to 330 degrees in the 360 degree space of Kalapursha. This is an airy sign. This is a Stira Rashi that is fixed Rashi. Among the categories of Chara, Stira and Opaya Rashis that is mobile, fixed and dual signs, the house of Aquarius is Stira Rashi that is fixed sign. This is the fixed sign of Saturn. In my last videos, I have explained about the movable house of Saturn, which is Capricorn. The movable Rashi of Saturn is better than the fixed sign of Saturn. The Aquarius is a fixed sign of Saturn. This is an even sign, masculine sign. This house holds the masculine characteristics of Saturn. This is an airy sign since the Aquarius represents the airy nature. When this house is very subatva, then the person will be inclined towards the field of aeronautics. The three airy signs in the natural zodiac are Gemini, Libra and Aquarius. That is Mithun, Tula and Kumbh. These three houses are based on the Panjabuddha Tattva, air, that is Vayu. Having said this, when the movable signs are very Subhatva in the natal chart, when the signs that represent the Panjabuddha Tattva, air, or Subhatva, provided Saturn is also Subhatva, I will always say that one would have studied aeronautical engineering. When some of my subscribers inquires me whether his son would study aeronautical engineering, then I will always check the house of Aquarius and the Subhatva of the Saturn. Therefore, when the house of Aquarius is Subhatva, the house that represents the air, Vayu, becomes Subhatva, then the person will be inclined to take the profession related to the air or any profession where the air plays a significant role. Even a water wash is also a field where air is used as a significant source. Aquarius is the 11th house of the Kala Purusha that extends from 300 degrees to 330 degrees. This is a masculine sign, fixed sign, the Saturn's fixed sign. The Saturn's own house. Aquarius signifies the body part ankles. This also signifies the nerves of the human body. 
you would have noticed there would be enlarged swollen or twisted veins in the legs of the people they are called as varicose veins such diseases are attributed to the saturn if one cannot walk or if one is limping or there are any diseases that hinders the walking you have to check the house of the aquarius the bone joints the ankles any issues related to these should be checked from this house the stars that resides in the house of aquarius are avittam third pada and fourth pada sadayam first pada second pada third pada and fourth pada purattadi first pada second pada and third pada that is dhanishta third pada and fourth pada satabisha first pada second pada third pada and fourth pada purva badra first pada second pada and third pada purattadi or purva badra is a broken nakshatra that spreads across two rashis that is in aquarius and also in pisces this is an airy sign of saturn the sign is completely filled with all complete characteristics of saturn this is an unfortunate sign i will say you know sometimes i really hesitate to say what i think in my mind indeed i hesitate to tell what is 100% true because i'm afraid that it hurts a few people around me but i would like to express or teach you without any personal likes or dislikes the exact truth it is then as an astrologer or an aspirant who wants to learn astrology more who wants to explore astrology can understand the characteristics of the house when i say something which is 100% true it is indeed bitter for few people they blame me that i am degrading the planet saturn and i degrade certain signs as well as a teacher i should explain the characteristics of a sign totally unbiased without any personal likes or dislikes if only you understand the very basic fundamental plot where the planets are going to reside you can make better predictions please do not take these explanations of mine regarding the native of aquarius ascendant or rashi very close to your heart or personally therefore the aquarius house is near the 12th house of the kala purusha naturally it is the 11th house of the kala purusha the 11th house actually signifies the elder brother if you want to check the status of the elder brother or the younger wife then you have to check the 11th house of the natural zodiac and also the 11th house to the ascendant you have to always check the subhatva and pabhatva of the house so far i have explained the nakshatras in the house of aquarius the body part that it signifies the panjabhuta tattva this house also indicates spiritualism what is the pictorial representation of the aquarius sign the pictorial representation of the aquarius is a pot a pot filled with water the pictorial representation of the aquarius is a water bearer who pours the water it is a fixed sign i believe i have explained all the basic characteristics of the aquarius i hope i did not forget any point this house does not have any light energy it is filled with darkness what does the aquarius indicate it represents all the bad characteristics of the saturn it signifies the stinkiness the unpleasant odor the places that are stinking the prison because this is almost the 12th house of kala purusha and this indicates the prison in case if the house is subhatva it signifies the spiritual place 
otherwise it signifies the prison this also represents the lord shiva this represents both the lord shiva and the prison this house signifies the tavam that is penance yoga and it also represents the act of imprisoning oneself the penance is nothing but imprisoning oneself this house also represents the areas that are stinking and dirty this signifies bathroom this house represents hospitals and all the places that are filled with grief wherever you see the grief then saturn signifies such areas because saturn is the significator of grief the places where we sleep the places that are filled with grief the places that delivers grief confused mind and inferiority complex what is the intricacy behind the concept that saturn signifies inferiority complex because this is the straight opposite house of the leo the house lord of the leo the sun delivers a lot of confidence whereas the saturn delivers a lot of inferiority complex the house of aquarius will make you to lose the confidence and it is a secret house as well this house signifies any actions that are done in a secret manner for example the bar where alcohol is consumed it is not possible to consume alcohol in public places even in foreign countries i don't think it is possible to consume alcohol in public places i have not heard so far that people can consume whiskey or brandy in public places this represents the places where actions are done in secret manner in a tent where people can drink consume alcohol or the places such as wine shop the breweries where all the actions are done in a secret manner or not publicly you will find that there are lot of negative points when you try to understand the house of aquarius of course it reflects a lot of negative points all the negative things that i say will be more or less according to the subhatva of the aquarius according to the subhatva of the ascendant lord which is saturn and according to the subhatva of the planet that resides in the aquarius you have to understand the philosophy first of all you have to understand which house delivers what effects and if only you understand the fundamental characteristic of the plot where the planets are going to reside and the concepts of subhatva and pabhatva you can make predictions very quickly and accurately the complete understanding of astrology without the concepts of light energy subhatva and pabhatva is not possible at all this is the biggest truth the aquarius signifies the hospital the grief and whatever is unpleasant to you this is the very basic nature of the native of aquarius ascendant the native of aquarius ascendant will be short they have a short stature and the native of aquarius ascendant can hold secrets they can guard the secrets you cannot identify or you cannot find whether the person is really laughing or crying they will not express their feelings openly the native of aquarius ascendant will not have friends and they love to spend time in solitude these people are lovers of solitude they love to do everything in solitude when a person does his action in solitude then nobody knows him except god saturn is the dark planet and the house is also filled with a lot of darkness because this is a house that is straight opposite to the house of leo if the aquarius is pabhatva 
then the native of Aquarius ascendant will work during the night shifts. Rather Pabatwa, I would say this is the very natural way that the Aquarius will be. There is a nuance between the very natural effect, Subatwa effect and Pabatwa effect. Please identify the difference between these concepts. This is the house filled with darkness and lets a person lose self-confidence. It signifies the stinky place, the old buildings, garbage, demolished places, disgusting places. And all these are signified by the house of Aquarius. In case if the Aquarius is Subatwa, then it will signify the spiritual places. Now let me explain the effects of the planet in the house of Aquarius. This is Saturn's own house. Having said this, the friendly planets of Saturn, Venus and Mercury can reside in the house of Aquarius. In this house of Aquarius, the planets that are friendly to Saturn, Venus and Mercury can reside but another planet which is friendly to Saturn that should not reside in this house is Rahu. I insist that Rahu should not reside in the house of Saturn because Rahu will act exactly like Saturn. They often say that the planet that is not necessary for our life is Saturn. Please try to understand the basics. There are three friends to the planet Saturn. The planets are Venus, Mercury and Rahu. I will even say that the Saturn, the Ascendant Lord, should not reside in its own house. It should not be in its own house, thus gaining Stanabala. This is why I say Rahu also should not reside in the house of Saturn. While I say even the house Lord of Aquarius should not reside in the Aquarius house, then Rahu also should not reside in the Aquarius house since Rahu behaves like the house Lord Saturn. When Saturn is in the house of Capricorn, it is a mobile sign Chararashi. It is better than the position of Saturn in the Aquarius because Saturn is already a lazy planet and if it resides in a fixed sign, Sirarashi, Aquarius, what would happen? What would happen if a lazy guy goes to another lazy house and sits there? He would behave like a couch potato. As per the concept that the Chararashis are very significant, that is the mobile signs are very significant, Saturn can reside in the house of Capricorn. At least this planetary position will let the native to walk faster though not running. But when Saturn resides in the house of Aquarius, what would happen? The person will be like a couch potato. He or she will not move from the place and will be ready to ask for alps. These people will behave like beggars who sit in a place and who does not want to toil and who wants to spend their life depending on others. Or the person will have a sedentary job which really does not demand much moving or shifting to other places. If there is Subatwa, then their profession will be definitely be a sedentary job where they can earn good profits. And this is how we must understand the nature of the planet Saturn. Of course, we have to understand the basic plot where the planets are going to reside. Having said all this, when the friendly planets of the Saturn, such as Venus and Mercury, resides in the house of Aquarius, it is good. I will share some intricacies of astrology now. The Rahu that resides in the house of Capricorn is a good boy. But when Rahu resides in the house of Aquarius, it is a bad boy. What is the secret behind this concept? In general, why do we say that Rahu should not reside 
in the stira rashi that is fixed sign of mars and saturn if you ponder about this you will definitely explore the secret behind this the rahu's nature is to behave like the house lord where it resides when saturn resides in the stira rashi fixed sign aquarius then it will make the native very sluggish and will dig a grave for him the person will reflect all the bad qualities of saturn such as inferiority complex then sluggishness negative thinking cunningness cheating and all the bad qualities this is why we say that rahu should not reside in the fixed sign of saturn when jupiter resides in the house of aquarius it will make a person spiritual because jupiter treats saturn both as enemy and as friend so it is neutral status you know what spiritualism is in this case the person will hate the life partner and the children and would like to live their life in solitude when jupiter resides in the house of aquarius the person will turn spiritual only after 40 or 50 years of age when a person does not get married at all to a girl and turns spiritual and stays in seclusion then at least the girl's life would have been saved when jupiter resides in the aquarius what would happen is the person will get married will raise two children and then since he is not able to manage the family he will run away from the family and then since he is not able to manage the family he will run away from the family to escape from the problems of the family and eventually turns as an ascetic i would say that he is not a good ascetic rather a one who is a cheat if you personally ask the reason they will say that their wife is like a monster a demon but what could a wife ask the husband a wife is going to ask only for food the basic needs education for children if a man cannot provide for his wife and the child the very basic needs the wife will definitely question why he should give birth to a child immediately the husband will leave the family and then he will go towards the north that is to himalayas to become an ascetic these sort of effects will be delivered by the jupiter that resides in the house of aquarius in brief a person who cannot manage his family who cannot face the challenges in the family runs as an ascetic in order to escape merely from the problems of the family then the person is not considered to be a true sanyasi why all these happens why the person cannot be a true ascetic because saturn is always a cheat and signifies selfishness when saturn is subhatva or if this house is subhatva then the person will be very fond of his family will be very attached to his family when it is pabatwa then he will hate his own family of course he will be praised as a great sanyasi by the whole town but if you inquire the wife of the person that is of the sanyasi she will reprimand him very badly these sort of sanyasi would love to run away escape from their problems as they could not face or solve the problems of the family they does not have the courage to manage all those i'm explaining to you both the pros and the cons of the planetary positions in a house so that you can have a better understanding about astrology see how beautiful the nuances are and i'm sharing all these for my subscribers having said all these aquarius is something beyond a usual one or the natural one when this aquarius house is aspected by jupiter whatever effects that is the negative effects i explained for the aquarius house will change completely 
However, when Jupiter resides in the house of Aquarius in case if the star lord is Rahu and if it resides in the nakshatra of Sadayam that is Satabesha and in addition to this if Rahu resides Pabatwa in some other house then it will lead the native to run away as an ascetic who cannot handle or manage the family problems who fail to manage it. In a nutshell, of course, Jupiter can reside in the house of Aquarius. This is a neutral house for the planet Jupiter. Aquarius is not an enemical house to Jupiter. For the planet Sun, Moon and Mars, this is an enemical house. Among the shadowy planets Rahu and Ketu, Ketu can reside in the house of Aquarius. Ketu is also a planet that signifies spiritualism. A point is often reiterated that the house of Virgo, Scorpio and Aquarius are auspicious houses for Ketu. Now let me explain the effects of other planets. Let me start to explain right from the planet Sun. From one point of view, when the Sun resides in the house of Aquarius, it is good because it is the month of Masi that is Maga, that is mid-February to mid-March. When Sun resides in the house of Aquarius, it means that the native was born during the month of Masi. Therefore, when a person was born during the month of Masi, that is Maga, the Sun is in a position that it can aspect its own house and strengthen it, that is the house of Leo. Based on which ascendant you are and based on which Bhava is the house of Aquarius to your ascendant, the native will get benefits from the government from the father. In addition to this, I always explain that the sun should not be in conjunction with Saturn or Rahu in this house. Yet, the sun can be in conjunction with any other planet in the house of Aquarius. It should not be in conjunction with a dark moon which has no light energy. If the person was born during the full moon of the month of Masi, then the person is such a fortunate one. The sun will gain a lot of Subhatva. If the person was born during the month of Masi Amavasya, that is Amavasya during the month of mid-February to mid-March, then the sun gets spoiled. Therefore, when the sun is not in conjunction with the dark planet, thus becoming not Pabatva, and when it aspects its own house Leo, it is very good for the native. When sun is in conjunction with Venus, it is added Subhatva. If Venus was combusted by the sun, then the sun can deliver the great benefits, the benefits from the government, benefit from the father, in the field of electricity, power, etc. Therefore, the sun will deliver its effects based on which ascendant you are when it resides in the house of Aquarius. For example, let us say that for the native of Taurus ascendant or Rishabh ascendant, Aquarius becomes the 10th house. And when sun resides Subhatva in the house of Aquarius, it will deliver great benefits through the profession. This becomes the 10th house for the native of Taurus Ascendant. So the sun gets the directional strength as well. The sun will deliver its benefits based on the Sthanabala. Of course, this is an enemical house to the sun. You have to consider the Dhridbala, Subhatva, in order to know the prediction of the sun. When sun aspects the house of Leo, when it resides in the house of Aquarius, it does not make the Leo house Subhatva, rather it strengthens the house. When a planet aspects its own house, the house will get strengthened, which is a significant one. Having said all these, when sun resides in the house of Aquarius, it is good. This means that the person was born during the month of Masi, that is Maga. 
द सन शुड नॉट बी इन कंजंक्शन विद राहू और सैटन वेन सन रिजाइट्स इन द हाउस ऑफ अक्वेरियस इट एस्पेक्ट्स इट्स ओन हाउस लियो एंड इट विल स्ट्रेंथ एन द हाउस ऑफ लियो विच विल डिलीवर बेनिफिट्स लाइक द पोजिशन इक्वल टू द किंग और बेनिफिट्स फ्रॉम द गवर्नमेंट बेनिफिट्स फ्रॉम पोलिटिशियंस लाइक एम एल ए मिनिस्टर्स एक्सेट्रा और इन एसोसिएशन विद द गवर्नमेंट अफिशियल्स और विल गेट कॉन्ट्रैक्ट्स फ्रॉम द गवर्नमेंट वर्किंग इन द इलेक्ट्रिकल फील्ड और इवन रनिंग एन ओल इलेक्ट्रिकल शॉप all these will be delivered when the sun is connected with the 10th house or the person will even study electrical and electronic engineering because the sun is in the mobile sign i have already mentioned that if only aquarius is subatwa one can study aeronautical engineering or work in the domain related to the flights and air those who are working in the flight service or related to air or those who fly in the air for their profession the aquarius will be definitely subatwa as per my concept of subatwa this will apply 100% valid there cannot be any changes in my concepts or in my words because among the categories of panjabhuta tatva air that is vayu this is a fixed sign of panjabhuta tatva vayu and this is also the own house of the saturn which itself signifies the panjabhuta tatva vayu that is air the other houses of mercury and libra that is the airy signs is not owned by the house lord that signifies vayu you should definitely explore that why i mention the subatwa of aquarius for the fields of aeronautical engineering or the professions related to flight service you should think why i do not mention about other houses such as virgo and libra despite they stay as airy sign despite they are categorized as airy signs you should ask why in particular i considered the house of aquarius the subatwa of the house for aeronautical engineering or any professions related to air the reason is saturn is a vayu graha that is a planet that signifies air the panjabhuta tatva the mercury and venus are made up of stone and mud whereas the saturn is a vayu graha it is a combination of space and air therefore the tatva of the planet and that of the house goes well hand in hand here therefore the subatwa of this house particularly renders it benefits by the professions aeronautics flight service anything related to air airports etc in my next video i'm going to explain about the effects of the other planets such as moon mercury venus etc in the house of aquarius needless to say I'm going to share much more intricacies of astrology. Well, this is question time. Is there any complete functional benefit for the native of Aquarius ascendant? Option A, yes. Option B, no. Please write your answers in the comment section of this video and you can also justify your response. The link of Aditya Guruji's website is given below in the description box of this video that is accessible by both iOS and Android users. The link of Google Play Store app is also given in the description box that is available only for Android users. The Tamil version of this video is also available. Please check the description box for the Tamil video link. Write your feedback to astro.write to us at gmail.com. This is Deepa signing off. Thank you.